How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. I apologize for this mess. I'm gonna clean it up right now. But nothing happens. I guess I have to clean it up later. So a couple of months ago, I made a video on how to create in-camera transitions with your iPhone, which you guys really loved. It has gotten over 240,000 views, which has become my second most popular video on my YouTube channel. And a lot of you guys wanted to know how I edited these transitions. So today is your lucky day because I will be showing you how I did that. And by the end of this video, you will be able to edit your own in-camera transitions. If you haven't seen the video yet, make sure to watch the video first. I will leave a link up here for you to check out. Keep in mind that there will be a timestamp below if you wanna skip or go back to particular part of the video. One of the most frequently asked questions I got on that video is what editing software do I use? Well, as the title suggests, I use Final Cut Pro. I use it basically for all of my edits. By the way, these editing techniques that I'm about to show you can also be applied with most editing softwares out there. The principles are really the same. Unfortunately, Final Cut Pro is only available for Mac users. If you don't have a Mac, then I'm sorry. If you plan on getting Final Cut Pro, you will have to make a one-time payment of $300, which I think is a great deal. Now, if you're new to Final Cut Pro, there is a 90-day free trial available if you want to test it out. Now, if you're wondering if these in-camera transitions can also be edited on a smartphone, I would say yes to a certain extent. So if you do your in-camera transitions right, you will have to do a little to no editing in post-production, but of course it depends on the transition you create. The editing app I would recommend is LumaFusion if you're using an iOS device or InShot, which works for both iOS and Android, but I find LumaFusion has more advanced features and is my personal favorite. So let's now head over to Final Cut Pro so that I can show you how I've edited these clips together to make the transition look seamless. So I've already imported the clips and have created a project. The first transition we're gonna look at is the sky transition. So I got both of my shots in the timeline and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shorten the clip to just have the best portion. So I'm gonna look at the first clip. So as George starts walking, I'm gonna cut it right here and then it's gonna move upwards and as I start with the camera, I'm gonna cut this section out. And in the second shot, as the camera moves downwards, I'm gonna cut out this portion. I'm gonna play back the clip now. Now we can add a speed ramp to both clips to make it even look more seamless. So to do that, I'm actually gonna first slow down both clips because I filmed them in 4K 60 frames per second. And to do that, I'm gonna select both of the clips, head over to this symbol right here, and then I'm gonna select automatic speed. And that will automatically slow down your footage while retaining the frame rate so that it doesn't look choppy. I'm now gonna hit the shift B to create a speed ramp and I'm actually gonna start the speed ramp right as it goes up. So I'm gonna hit the shift B right here. And on the second shot, I'm gonna hit the shift B over here. So I want the speed ramp to stop here. So I'm gonna move the cursor right here, hit shift B. And in, in the first clip, I'm gonna speed it up four times. And in the second shot as well. So what this does is in the first shot, the speed will start from slow motion to fast motion. And then in the second shot from fast motion to slow motion. So we're gonna look at that right now. Boom. So that doesn't look too bad at all. And I can actually even increase the speed a little bit by dragging over here. And with this shot as well, I'm gonna drag it to the left to increase the speed even more. Find that this is really fast, so I'm gonna slow this down a little bit more to match it with the first shot. And the second shot, I'm gonna increase the speed. 
And what this does is it smoothens out the speed ramp a bit. So as I pull it away, it creates a smoother speed ramp. What we're now going to do is create a fade transition between the two clips. And to do that, I'm going to select one clip, hit the Command T button. And as you can see, it already created a fade transition in between the two clips. I usually keep it very short, the fade duration, so that it's not too obvious. But as I play it back now, This actually looks really good. So yeah, that is how you edit a sky transition. I will tell you right now that these two methods, the speed ramp and the fade transition are simple ways that will help create a seamless transition between two shots. So the next transition we're going to look at is the match cut. So I dragged both of the shots into the timeline and just selected the best portion. And to create a match cut, I'm going to drag the second clip on top of the first one, like so. And I'm gonna zoom in a bit. And I'm gonna lower the opacity on the second shot to around 50%. And I'm gonna hit the transformation tool and align it with the first shot. And I should have thought of this uh, when I filmed this video because in the second shot, George is too far away. But luckily I recorded the video in 4K so I can zoom all the way in uh, without losing quality when exporting it in 1080p. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna zoom all the way in to match it with George. Like that. And I'm gonna hit done and I'm gonna put the opacity back to 100 and I'm gonna drag it back to the primary timeline and when I play it back, it created a nice match cut. Another great tip that makes your match cut look even better is to match it with the movement. So as George walks forward and puts his right foot onto the floor, in the second shot, George should be putting his right foot on the floor as well. So I'm gonna hit the T button, which is the uh, trim tool, and then I'm gonna drag it to the left so that his right foot hits the floor. And this way it looks even more seamless. See that? Boom. Pretty awesome. So there you have it. You've now created a simple match cut. So next I will show you how I edit the mask out frame transition where I used a green screen. So in the first shot, I have a George holding up his phone with a green screen and I'm gonna first head over to the keyer and I'm gonna drag the keyer over and apply it onto that clip. And as you can see, the screen starts to turn black. So the cure already looks pretty good. I don't have to do any additional um, fine tuning. And what I now can do is drag the first shot on top of the second shot. And what that does is it's playing the second shot in the background. As you can see, the second shot is played onto that phone right now. As I move in, sort of transitions into the second shot. I added speed ramps to both of the clips. As you can see, it starts slow motion and then speeds up fast. As well as in the second shot, it starts speeding up fast and then uh, goes back into normal speed. Now on top of that, I wanna add a nice rotation to it. So what I'm gonna do is hit the transformation tool and hit the keyframe button up here, move it all the way to the end of the clip, and then zoom in, and then turn it like that. So, And when playing it back, it creates this awesome inception effect. Pretty cool. And I notice a little bit of green over here, so I can head over to the keyer 
and use this sample tool to get rid of that greenish tint over here. And as I play it back, looks pretty nice. So next I'm gonna show you how I mask out objects. So I'm first gonna select the first shot where George is walking and passing by a tree. And we're actually gonna mask out this part right here. And I'm gonna drag the cursor around here and set a marker by hitting M. The next thing I'm gonna do is type in draw mask and I'm gonna drag this onto the first shot. And now I can create these control points. And as you can see, as I drag these control points, it's gonna create a mask. So what we're now gonna do is I'm gonna open up the draw mask to reveal all the settings that we can change. I'm actually gonna right click and select add. What I'm also gonna do is increase the feather a bit. And I'm now gonna move frame to frame and adjust the mask. So I'm gonna move forward and sort of drag this backwards. And again, until the whole tree is out of the frame. So there you have it. I'm now gonna play it back so that you guys can see how it looks like. So what I'm now gonna do is actually drag the first clip on top of the second clip and I'm actually gonna create a gap so that I can move this right where the mask starts. So as I play the clip back, you get a nice masking transition. So yeah, as you can see, it isn't hard to edit these transitions if you filmed it right in the first place. I hope this editing tutorial was helpful for you. If it was, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment below if you have any further questions. Now, if you're new to mobile filmmaking, make sure to download my free smartphone filmmaking guide that will show you the tools you need to get started and also a couple of useful tips to get started filming with your smartphone. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, take care, and I will see you in the next video. I need to clean all of this.